Jesus, my Savior. Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength, let every breath all that I am never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Oh, the great Jesus My Jesus, my Savior, for there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Oh, let every breath, let all that I am never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us see his power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands forever. Nothing compares to the promise I have. Nothing compares to the promise I have. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. We've been given great and precious promises whereby we can be partakers of his nature no matter what's going on. That's why we as those that are following Christ even in a time like this can bless the Lord at all times and have ministry. That's what it is. Allowing us to have ministry and have a song even in a day like today. Bless the Lord oh my soul oh my soul worship his holy name Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. The sun comes, it's a new day dawn, it's time to sing your song again, whatever may pass. And whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship.
worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. I love this. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Sing along with me. Here we go. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul. Worship your holy name. Here it is. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forever more. I love it. Sing it with me. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship your holy name. One more time together. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never Worship your holy name, I worship your holy name, we will worship your holy name. We'll praise him now. Mike B, Pastor Mike is coming to pray for us and with us. Mike B. Thank you, Lance and Jim, for leading us in praise and worship this evening. I just want to say good evening, everybody. Thank you for being here. Let's open with prayer. Father God, we just thank you for the opportunity to come before your throne of grace and mercy tonight. Now, Father, use me as a vessel for uh, your kingdom as I share my hopes, strengths, and experiences with people tonight, especially as we go through this time of challenge with this coronavirus. Father, this is a, a different way of uh, touching our congregation and talking to them. So, Father, uh, just uh, use me in a mighty way tonight. Open up the hearts of everyone listening and watching. And uh, Father, uh, we just give you praise and glory as we make ourselves available to you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Wow, what a, what a weird experience this is for me to be here tonight talking to you uh, through the uh, social media. But through this time of uh, social distancing, uh, we've had to make some changes and become adaptable. But my wife reminded me of some uh, scripture today. It was Isaiah 26, 20, and uh, it says, Go, my people, and enter your rooms and shut the doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while until his wrath has passed by. So I guess that's what we're, we're doing. When she read that to me, I go, wow, that's exactly what we're doing. We're, we're in our house. We shut the doors. We're, we're maintaining some social distancing, and uh, we're making ourselves uh, available to God and his spirit and his wisdom. And so tonight, as we talk about prayer and fasting, um, Pastor Tom asked me to share a couple of thoughts, and I didn't really know what I was going to talk about, but I, what I did was I, I looked at the different types of fasts that are, are available. When we first started this prayer and fasting session, uh, Pastor Tom gave us a handout that uh, shared the different kinds of fasts. And so there was the Apostle Fast, there was the uh, Samuel Fast, uh, the Apostle Fast addressed addictions to sin, the Samuel Fast uh, is to bring evangelism and revival. The Elijah Fast was to solve emotional and mental problems. Uh, but the one fast that jumped out at me, to, especially during this time that we're 
uh, focusing on uh, staying uh, still and not being out into the public and trying to stay away from uh, this virus uh, was the Ezra fast, is to solve problems. And so I said, okay, let me get dig into uh, the book of Ezra. So today I really did some studying in the book of Ezra. In fact, I read the whole book. And the book of Ezra has like eight chapters. The first seven chapters uh, tell the story of how the Israelites were allowed to return to Jerusalem after the years of captivity underneath the Babylonian Empire. The Persians had, uh, had overtaken the Babylonians, and then uh, the Persians were allowing the Israelites to return to uh, Jerusalem to rebuild their temple. Um, but what's really amazing about the book of Ezra, Ezra isn't mentioned until the eighth chapter. And so um, what happened was, over the years of many different Persian kings, uh, Israel was allowed to return to Jerusalem. And not only were they allowed to return to Jerusalem, they were allowed to return to Jerusalem with the king of Persia's blessings. He gave them edicts where they were given all the, all the treasures that were taken out of the temple before Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the temple and taken it up to Babylon. And that now, now what happens is he was allowing them to take it all back to Jerusalem. Plus, he was going to finance the whole rebuilding of the temple. And so that was really an exciting time for Israel. But Ezra was given the opportunity, it was given the challenge of taking all this material and all this money back and all this, challenge, all this gold back. Uh, and Ezra was facing a lot of challenges. Uh, he was especially the threat of being robbed by thieves and gangsters. Can you just imagine, uh, everybody knows now that all these Israelites are going from Babylon down to uh, Jerusalem carrying tons of gold and silver and, and provisions. And there was, the area was full of gangsters and thieves that were out there ready to pounce upon them, right? So he was especially uh, under the threat of being robbed by thieves and gangsters. You know, uh, he was underneath a, an attack. John 10.10 10 tells us that we, have, we too have thieves lying in wait for us. Uh, he has come to, he has come to, to, provision, come to the provisions and make us slaves of fear. In other words, the evil one uh, wants to make us slaves of fear and torment and worry and anxiety. Sounds kind of familiar with what we're going through today. Uh, it's, it's really scary. Uh, the book of Ezra tells the story of the Jews returning back to Jerusalem from captivity in Babylon. And for Ezra, those returning with him, the long journey ahead was plagued by gangs and thieves. Ezra and the Jews had their wives and children with them, as well as silver, gold, and sacred articles of the temple, their household goods and treasures too. And the Israelites were not leaving Babylon captivity as beleaguered prisoners. They were not mere escapees. They had settled down in Babylon, built houses and businesses, and many had grown wealthy. Some did not want to live in the primitive conditions in order to rebuild their nation. They wanted to enjoy the luxury of Babylon. The Jews who, who did not want to return were required to send gold and silver for rebuilding the temple, and Ezra was transporting their money and possessions. So Ezra had the responsibility of taking all, this, all, all the things back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. And so he had this challenge. How was he going to get there? And well, it says in Ezra chapter 8, verses 21 through 23, after being given the gift of, of going back to Jerusalem with, uh, with the king's blessings, it writes in Ezra 21 through 23, There by the Ahava Canal I proclaimed a fast, so that we might humble ourselves before our God and ask him for a safe journey for us and our children with all our possessions. I was ashamed to ask the king for soldiers and horsemen to protect us from enemies on the road because we had told the king, the good hand of God is on everyone who looks to him, but his great anger is against all who forsake him. So we fasted and petitioned our God about this, and he answered our prayer. So what do we take from this? An Ezra fast. At any time we're making major decisions, we should go on an Ezra fast. If you're making a certain decision, a job decision, a marriage or something, you should maybe consider fasting, taking an, uh, an Ezra fast. Such change could be a marriage, a move, or a new job. When we encounter a problem we didn't initiate, we didn't initiate this virus. We had nothing to do with it. 
we need to go on an Ezra fast. When we continue, when we encounter hardships, we should fast as Ezra and the Jews did. When I think about staying home for 15 days and not being able to go out and, and do the things that I normally would do, especially in the area of recovery. Celebrate Recovery is, is a ministry where the whole process of the recovery program is to gather with one another, to meet with each other. We have this thing saying, meeting makers make it. And now we're asked to isolate. It goes directly against the principles of, of our recovery program. But we need to isolate at times like this. But you know what? At times like this, I can isolate, but I don't have to be away from it. Because of technology, I can call people. I can talk to them on social media. We can do this kind of stuff that we're doing here tonight. And so uh, we need to be obedient, but we need to encourage one another. And we need to encourage one another to focus on God. And that's what fasting does. It takes my eyes off of the problem and onto God. I want to look at the solution and not the problem. Um, there were some things that I, I noticed about it, and I got them in my notes here. It says you should fast on this. Uh, you should fast on. Uh, let me see where I have it here. It says search for scriptural solutions to the problem. Take time to write out the scriptural principles involved in the problem and ask how have people in the Bible solved problems similar to this. Well, Ezra solved the problem by fasting and praying and asking for God's protection. And we can do that too. Um, know the desired outcome of, of, uh, of what we want. When you, call on, when, you, when you call for an Ezra fast, you should first pray for victory. And you should know what you want the outcome to be and ask God to give it, give it to you. Don't enter the fast focusing on the problem. Enter the fast focusing on, focusing on the victory. So know what you want and then seek that and focus on the, on the end of the, of the journey. So basically, I just wanted to share with you a couple of short notes about the Ezra fast. It's something where what happens is it, it's, we can use it to solve problems. We can walk into it with a sense of boldness and confidence, knowing that God is bigger than any challenge that we might have. So tonight, I just wanted to say, you know what? Don't be afraid. Be bold. Walk with confidence, knowing that God is bigger than any challenge that we might face. He's bigger than this virus that we're looking at. Like Pastor Tom has alluded to uh, time and time again over the last few weeks, Psalms 46. The psalmist says, the Lord is my refuge. He is my strength. Uh, I like to paraphrase when he says, you know what? When the, when the earth swallows the mountains, when the waves are bashing over my head, uh, he's my river of life during a time of drought. I need to be still and know that he is God. So I just want to encourage all of us to stay strong, be bold, know that God is bigger than this virus. He's bigger than any challenge that might come across our path. And we just need to pray and fast and seek him and focus on Jesus and not on the problem. So with that, I just want to say, hey, it's been great being with you here tonight. Um, it's, enjoy it's weird. It's different for me. I, I'm not used to this kind of uh, social interacting, but it's kind of exciting and new and I get used to it and I plan on using it more but it's been great to be with you tonight and so now as I uh, pass this on to Pastor Jim uh, he's going to bless us with his songs. Thank you for letting me be with you tonight.
and someday when our work is through, our Savior will break through the eastern skies to welcome his children back home. Oh, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus, my wonder. how many times that that day will come and you know sometimes we we kind of kind of don't realize how soon it is but we need to be ready just like what pastor is going to bring tonight he's going to be talking about another day when it was prophesied that it was going to rain and yet people just put it off really didn't believe it just did other things and all of a sudden one day it began and the ark was complete oh i can't wait to hear what he has to say Tonight, I want you to welcome Pastor Buck. Well, good evening, folks. Glad to be with you again. You just heard from Jim Sunderworth, and that's always a blessing. Um, no one sings like Jim, and we're glad to have him. So tonight, we want to just share a few things with you. And I, I want to remind you right off that Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, I will build my church in the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And I remind you, we are the church. As you think about that, I want you to think about prayer and fasting. We've been talking about this, and we've been praying and fasting, not to get God to do something, but to change our hearts and our minds, and for us to actually draw closer to God. And as we pray and fast, God changes us in mountains actually do move in our lives. Tonight I want to quote an old gospel psalm. 
It's one that many of you will know well. And it's good, it's, it's perfect for the times that we find ourselves in. It says this, When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy? You are called to bear. Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will be singing as the days go by. Aren't those good words? Listen to the third verse. When you look at others with their lands and gold, think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings, money cannot buy your reward in heaven, nor your Lord on high. And here's the last verse, good for our times and what we're living through. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged. God is over all. Count your many blessings. Angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. And then I haven't quoted the chorus, but you know it. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. See what God has done. Count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Now, tonight, as you think about those blessings, I want you to think how blessed you are. Lots of people feel bummed out and really discouraged and tension is mounting because it's supposed to shelter in place. But the truth is, we have lots of blessings. And I, I want to talk about Noah and his family tonight to remind you how many blessings we have that we have not lost, even though times are changing and they're turbulent around us. This is what Genesis chapter 7, verse 11 says. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. And the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. Wow. So Noah was 600. And the fact is that God called him to build an ark and he didn't get on the ship until he was 600 years old. Most scholars believe it took about 100 years to build the ark. In chapter 8, verse 1 of Genesis, it says, But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark, and he sent a wind over the earth, and the waters receded. So even though Noah was called to do a task that most of the world thought he was crazy for doing, and he was called to shelter in place. Imagine that. And he was called to do that at 500 years old, and at 600 years old, he got on the ark. I just want to remind you tonight, as you pray and fast, God didn't forget him. And so as you pray, you can ask the Lord simply, a very simple prayer. Lord, remember us. Remember me. Remember my family. Put your hand of protection over us. Help us be safe as we shelter in place. Genesis chapter 8, verse 13. By the first day of the month, of the first month of Noah's 600th year, the water had dried up from the earth. Noah then removed the covering from the ark and saw that the surface of the ground was dry. Then God said to Noah, Come out of the ark, you, your wife, your sons, and their wives. And then I want you to just notice what Noah did. He built an altar, chapter 8, verse 20. He built an altar to the Lord, and he worshiped. In all of the stress, 
in all of the trouble, in all of the rain, in all of the storm, wondering if it would ever end, he didn't forget God. I want to encourage you tonight to remember that part of the reason we pray and fast is so that we don't forget God. Now, as you think about Noah, this was an uncommonly difficult task. And then he had to shelter in place. Now, we're, we're worried about 15 days. Or we're worried about if they extend it for another 15 days, it might be a month. Some people are saying, what if it's two months? Well, try this. Noah sheltered in place for 370 days. From the day that he got on the ark until God opened the door and they were able to get off of the ark. It was 370 days. So let's just say it was one year. Wow. Isn't that amazing? And Oh, by the way, Noah didn't have any cell phone. He didn't have any other means of communication. Even when he wanted to see if the earth was beginning to dry up, he couldn't call someone. He just had to send a dove out. And if the dove came back, he knew there was no place for the dove to stay. That's an odd way to find things out for us. So I'm just reminding you, he didn't have a cell phone. We have a cell phone in our pocket every place we go. He didn't have any internet or Wi-Fi. How about thinking of this? We're, I know this sounds really funny to talk about it, but we're worried about toilet paper. Noah didn't have any modern plumbing on the ark. Now there's a thought for you. My grandchildren are trying to figure out what do you do if you can't get any toilet paper? And we've explained those things to them. They say, oh, nobody would do those things. They say, you do what you have to do. So no modern plumbing. How about no contact at all with the outside world? We can still go to the grocery store. We can actually still go and do essential business. We're not completely isolated from everyone. We have contact with people. Noah was on that ark. There were eight souls on that ark for 370 days. Think you might get tired of seeing the same people, the same, there's seven other people for 370 days? Oh, no grocery stores. But here's one for you to think about. No air conditioning. You know, that's why I started with the song I did. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. I just gave you the true definition of sheltering in place. And not only that, remember what we said. It took a 100 years to build the ark. That was nothing. Or... Or being on the ark one year was nothing compared to a hundred years to build the ark. I want you to think, in comparison to the rest of your life, what is one month? It's not that much. And we've been so blessed, and we still have many, many blessings. And oh, by the way, we get to take this journey at a lot younger age than Noah. I can't even imagine doing what he did starting at 500 years old. And that's when he was just starting to have his family as well. I mean, you got to be kidding. So think about it. And then when he got off the ark, the Bible tells us he lived another 350 years. So what would I like to say to you this evening? I'd like to remind you that God is our shelter in the time of storm. I'd like to remind you to remember Psalm 27, Psalm 121, other Psalms. I'd like to remind you tonight to remember that Jesus said that he would never leave us nor forsake us 
and he would be with us to the end of the age. I'd like to remind you tonight that he said, I will not leave you. So Jesus spoke to the storm. His disciples were afraid. He took the fear away. He just stood on that boat and he said, peace, be still. And immediately the wind and the wave stopped. You need to know that God has the power over any storm that comes in your life. And as you pray and fast, you will realize that more than ever. So remember, God is our shelter in the time of storm. Remember that. And until the storm is over, the songwriter said, until the storm passes by, I, I would just say to you tonight, until the storm is over, trust God. Don't forget to do it. Just trust God. Don't trust yourself. Don't be worrying about your bank account. Don't worry about what's happened to your retirement. Listen, God took care of people before there was ever any kind of retirement accounts. And he's able to do that even today. So I leave you with these words tonight. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. The psalmist said, therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed or the mountains be cast into the sea. And then in verse 10 of Psalm 46, he said, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathens. I will be exalted in all of the earth. As you pray and fast, learn this lesson. In the end, God will always be lifted up. People who are not paying attention to God right now, I believe they're going to start. So as I've encouraged you to do, pray that God would make you a witness. Pray that you would be that ambassador for Christ because you are a new creation. As I've encouraged you to do, let the light and the love of Jesus shine through you. Take time to call your neighbors. Take time to love somebody today. Take time not to just say you're a Christian. Take time to be who God called you to be, a new creation in Christ. And then the psalmist said this, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And the very last word, Selah. Pause. Think about it. Look up. Be refreshed. That's what prayer and fasting will do for you. It'll change your focus. It'll change your mind. And it'll change your heart. God bless you as we continue to pray and fast together. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, you were condemned. I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be? That you, my King, would die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, you were condemned. But I'm alive and well, spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love. How can it be that 
you my king would die for me amazing love i know it's true it's my joy to honor you in all i do i honor you Father, tonight we thank you for what we've heard. We thank you, Father, that we know without a shadow of a doubt that all things work together somehow, some way for your good. And I thank you tonight, Father, that, that as Pastor shared with us, yeah, sometimes we're in these situations where we can't make it through. And yet, Lord, we can make it through with you. Because you give us the strength we need every day, every hour, and sometimes by the second. In our weakness, you become our strength. So, Father, bless us tonight. As we continue in our fast, Father, to be focused upon you. Lord, we give you praise for everything as you bring us through this. We'll look back and say, thank you, Father, for every, every bit of strength and every bit of wisdom that you give us. Every bit of ability to stay true. We say thank you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.